Hello guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. My name is Rajat and today we will be discussing the question maximum number of events that can be attended. In this question we are given an array of events where event i is start date and end date. Every event i starts at start date and ends at end date. Now we can attend an event i at any date d where d lies between start time and end time and we can only attend one event at any given day. We need to return the maximum number of events that can be attended. So in the first example as we can see that there are three events given to us. First event is starting at day 1 and ending at day 2. Second event is starting at day 2 ending at day 3. And third event starting at day 3 ending at day 4. As we can attend all the three events at each day in total we can attend three events and that's why the output is 3. Now the second example is a bit tricky and confusing. So we will discuss that in detail. Going through the constraint we see that the length of the events array can go up till 10 raised to power 5. That means that our solution cannot be of time complexity O of n square. It should be less than that. Now we will first discuss why the output is 4 in this second example. So in the second example we were given 4 events. The first event was which is starting from day 1 and ending at day so this event. Now there was second event which was starting from day 2 ending at day 3 then day 3 ending at day 4 and again there was one event which was starting at day 1 and ending at day 2. Now we all thought that we can start off with attending the event at day 1 then we can attend the event at day 2 and then we we'll need to attend the event at day 4. And so the answer should be 3 but the output given to us is 4. So how is that? So when we see that we see what we can effectively do is we can take up the day 1 in the first event. We can then attend the event at day 2 this event. Over here we can attend at day 3 the second event and the third event can be attended at day 4. And that's how the answer is 4. In this particular case because we can attend all the four events given to us in the example 2. I hope this clear up the confusion with the example 2. We'll move forward and we'll understand what the problem is about and how we can solve it. With the second example we also understand few of the things that attending an event means attending the event at any given day. We need not to attend the whole event for all the days we just need to attend it for the one day and if we do so then also we can count that event as attended. Now let's understand the problem. Suppose as a person you come into office and you see there are many meetings lined up for you for the entire month and some of those meetings have been listed down to you. There is a meeting starting at day one ending at day two. Again a meeting then on day 3 there is a meeting then there are two meetings starting on day 1 and ending at day 5. When you enter the office on day 1 there are four meetings lined up for you these four meetings you have meeting 1 comma 2 1 comma 2 comma 5 and 1 comma 5. Now which of these meeting would you will be willing to accept? Now the idle choice will be selecting a meeting which has a lower end time. Why is that? Because it gives you an option to select these meetings or attend these meetings in the future days. But if you select these particular meetings at the very start, you will be in a case wherein you will lose out in attending the first two meetings. Let's take that as an example. And suppose we selected on day 1 we selected the meeting 1 comma 5 this one now on day 2 when you come into office you still have these meetings which you can attend and there is no new meeting the 3 comma 3 comes on day 3 now again on this day you selected 1 comma 5 this particular meeting and now you move to day 3 wherein you have these three meetings 1 comma 2 1 comma 2 and 3 comma 3 now you know that you cannot attend these two meetings as the meeting has already ended on day 2 itself 
and you only have a choice of attending this meeting which is the third meeting so the total number of meeting that you attended over here is 3 so the answer is 3 now consider a scenario you come into office on day 1 you see that you have 4 meetings 1 comma 2 1 comma 2 1 comma 5 and 1 comma 5 and you end up selecting this particular meeting which is 1 comma 2 you selected that meeting you go home you come to office on day 2 you now also have 3 meetings 1 comma 2 1 comma 5 1 comma 5 and again what you do is you selected this particular meeting 1 comma 2 you go home you came on day 3 you have 2 meetings from the previous day 1 comma 5 1 comma 5 and one more meeting which is 3 comma 3 on this particular day you end up selecting this particular meeting since it has the lowest end date among all you go home you come on day 4 you have two meetings still you selected one you go home you come to day 5 and attend the final meeting which is 5 and over here all the conditions are met we are attending only one meeting a day and the total number of meetings that we have attended is 5 and hence the maximum meetings that we can attend with this particular set of meetings or events is 5 but in the previous case we were getting the value as 3. This signifies the importance of selecting a meeting with the lowest end date among all other meetings for the given day. So what we are effectively doing is on any particular day we are trying to find all the meetings which has the start time equal to or less than the given date. Among all these meetings or events, we are trying to find out that one event which has the lowest end date so that we are over with this particular event and we still have a chance to attend the rest of the meetings because their end date is further into the future. So there are two things we are doing over here. First, we are finding the events whose start date is less than or equals to the given day. And second thing, we are selecting event with the with lowest end date. So now, the one thing or hint that comes to picture is, if we are to go through a meeting we will be going them sequentially and the sequence should be all the meetings that are starting early should be taken into consideration early that means we need to sort the array events on the basis of start date that is the first point that we need to do once we have that we can iterate over it find out all the end dates less than or equals to the given day and then select out one value and if we have passed a certain date then all the values or the end dates past that particular day are of no use to us let's give you an example if you are at day 5 and there lies certain events which has an end date of 1 2 3 4 then we cannot possibly attend these events and these are of no use to us and we can simply remove that. We will see that more clearly once we start coding this particular approach. You will see how we are using these two points in solving this question. So let's jump on to the coding part. So as we discussed, we need to sort this array based on the start date of all the events. So we will call the sort function of arrays class in that. We'll write a custom comparator. Now we discuss that once we have this sorted array, we need to take into consideration all the values or the events up till this particular given day. So we'll need a day. We'll take a variable for that. This will define on which day we are currently. Now in order to iterate over this events array, we will need an index. So we'll define an index. We'll be starting from zero as well. And for simplicity purpose, we'll take the length of this events array into a variable as well. What is the best data structure to use in case we need a sorted values after we 
add them continuously. So there is a data structure called priority queue which we can use. It is basically a queue based data structure which stores the result in a sorted way and when we insert a new element into this queue, it reorders itself to keep the sorting order maintained. So we'll define a priority queue. We're not defining any custom comparator or anything into the priority queue because by default priority queue handles the data into a ascending order and we are only having an integer value. As in most of the cases, we need to iterate over this priority queue till it is not empty. And now, since the data is coming from this events array, we need to take care of this index as well that it should not go beyond the length of the array. Now consider the case we are on a day zero, the queue will be uh, empty, but there is nothing that we have put in up till now. So in that case, the starting point will be the first day of the event, which is the first event, which will be present at index zero. So this brings us to the first condition that we will be writing over here. If the queue is empty, I'll be calling it a queue because priority queue over here is uh, pretty self-explanatory. So if the queue is empty, in that case, the day will be nothing but the start date of the current index, which will be. Now, once we have this day, we need to put all the values or all the end date of all the events up till this particular day. So the condition would be like this. If this index is less than n and the start day of this index is less than or equals to the current day, we need to put this value into the priority queue. Now priority queue has a method called offer in which we will be adding this events end date. We added that, we'll increment the index. We can also increment the index over here itself, but for simplicity, I am putting it over here. Now, once we have this index, we know that we have added at least one event into this queue. That means we can take out one of the value from this queue, the end date, because that is the one event we will be attending for sure. The day will also get incremented because we have booked this particular day and now we have attended this event on this particular day and now we are moving to the next day. That is similar to you completing your work, going home and coming on to the next day. We will also need the number of events that we have attended into a variable. So we will define that variable as well. Initially it will be zero result. We will increment that over here. Now we talked about a condition wherein if there are events in this queue or if there are events whose end time are past this current day, then they are of no use to us. So we can simply remove them from the priority queue. So for that also we will need a while loop. We can just simply check the condition where the priority queue is not empty. And now we'll check if the value at this top of this priority queue is less than the current day. And if it is, we can just remove the value from this priority queue. At the end, we need to simply return the result. So this peak method basically returns the first value in the queue without actually removing that and poll method removes the first value into the queue. So this completes the coding part. In this particular problem, what we are effectively doing is we are using the two points that we discussed. We are finding out all their events which are starting before this given day or on this given day, taking all those end date into a priority queue. We are using priority queue so that the end dates are in sorted order and we are easily able to select the smallest one of those. We'll just remove that. We are attending that particular event. Each end date represent an event. And lastly, what we are doing is we are removing the values or the end dates which are past the current day because we cannot attend those particular events. Now let's run this code for the sample test cases. So it ran successfully. Let's submit this. So it got submitted successfully. The time complexity is of n log n because we are using a sorting array. As we are using an extra space which is priority queue to store the end dates, the space complexity will be o of n. That's all for today's video. 
do let us know your thoughts comments and queries into the comment section below please like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for watching see you in the next one